<laughs> I, I guess I can't do it on my laptop. Oh, yeah. I'm on my oh, phone. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I'll just uh, swap out here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I so appreciate it. And I know tech is always like, especially with a live event, one of the challenges. Well, especially with me, I'm not great at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I so appreciate you. I was giving an introduction. Um, I know our audience knows you, but we're so happy to have you on Latino Rebels talking about the strike and why it's so important for Latinos. So just thank you, first of all. Of course, for all of course, of course. <laughs> so do you want to start by just like explaining why the strike is important to you? Oh my gosh, as a Latina or a human or an actor, which... which uh, Todas, um, todos, todos. So as an actor, I'll, talk, I'll start there because that's like the general. Um, it's very important because our contracts are based on an, it's an antiquated contract. It originated in the 60s and through every single evolution, it's been added to piecemeal from network television, which is what it was originally created for, to cable, to DVD, to VHS, to internet, to streaming. And they've always just moderated it and tweaked it a little bit. And that doesn't work. It's unsustainable. It hasn't kept up with the economy. And we don't have living wages at this point. Like I'm getting paid like literally 0, 0.00 cents per episode for shows that are now streaming and earning corporations millions of dollars. So that feels like a huge disparity. And I think collectively 97% of the actors, of the 160,000 actors, SAG members, SAG after members, authorized this strike because people are leads of shows and not able to make their minimum insurance, the minimum requirement to, to qualify for insurance. But yet their face is on a giant billboard on Sunset Boulevard and everybody thinks it's so glamorous and fabulous, but they're just hustling nonstop to make ends meet. So. We have accommodated very many times. And I think it's now, now the, the model for programming is no longer just network TV. Streaming is a completely different animal. Network television used to be based on viewership. Now it's based on subscribers. And we used to be able to count and make sure we were properly um, compensated for viewers. But now with subscribers, corporations don't open their books. They don't care about maintaining viewers like the shows that you love. That's why they get canceled after a short period of time. Now they're just trying to get new subscribers constantly. So they're constantly canceling old shows. Uh, and the orders are so small of the episodes. It used to be 22 to 28 episodes per season. Now, the last show I just did, it was six. I I mean six and the year before that it was five and what people don't realize is okay go get another job no i'm a series regular i'm not allowed my contract does not allow me to do another series i can only do three non-reoccurring guest spots on three different shows so i'm unemployed for nine months out of the year and they hold me under a contractual hold they're stopping me from making a living they're stopping and 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 it's not just me it's like the baby young performers. This is for future generations because this model is unsustainable for us who've been, I've been doing it for 35 years. They're just starting. How are they supposed to get a chance? So that's a long winded way of saying that we need to be compensated fairly for what the business model is now. Yeah, I feel like that was a really great answer for why it matters for actors, but I want to hear more about why, you know, we're in a Latino space. I want to hear more about what's so important for our community. Okay, so what I just said about the general average actor, yeah. Latinos are so much worse off. I mean, it's been brutal. And especially with AI now, that's a whole other topic. But like, I come from a time when even Latinos were not allowed to play our own roles, like our own stories. We could not get cast in them. I mean, it comes to mind Catherine Zeta-Jones playing a Mexican in Zorro and Anthony Hopkins playing old Zorro, him with an English accent and her with a Mexican accent, and it launches her to become a huge star. 
Now that would have been an opportunity for a Latina to, to make inroads in the business. But because at that time they'd slap a little bronzer on someone and, oh, they're a Mexican. So it was bad then. And now we're just now being able to tell our own stories, write our own stories, become showrunners for our own stories, direct our own stories, star in our own stories. And now they want to replace us with AI. So if we're such a marginalized community representation wise, because we're only seven, we're only represented 7% in a business that's in Los Angeles, California, right? That used to be Mexico. We're only 7%. So you realize the giant monolith that is actors and we're only seven percent of that and then it's just unsustainable and the economic model right now is based off of people who have generational wealth yes you can sustain if you have family members who can support you or college tuition that was paid for or you know we don't necessarily always have that so then you can't hang in there in this business that's paying a Latino, Latina, Latinx, Latina person, nothing. And then like, we still have James Franco playing Castro. So it's not an even playing field. So it's harder for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I've loved watching the videos of the picket line and the dance. <laughs> Tell me a more about how that got organized and how you got involved with it. Yeah. Well. I think as performers and actors, we are very good at making everything look super glamorous. Mm -hmm. Like if you see us struggle, if you see our pain, our hours, our, our just bloody feet from standing and if you see any of that, we've done a bad job. We make everything look prettier than it is. And that's kind of working against us because when it started, everybody was like, what are you talking about? Everybody's a celebrity. You have millions and millions and millions of dollars. And I realized people really don't understand how our business works. One, because the studios aren't really transparent about any of it. People don't realize like if my face is on a billboard, I don't get paid for that. I sign a contract that says, yes, you may use my likeness for to advertise the show. There are limitations. Um, if I'm on a red carpet, doing interviews, press all day, I don't get paid for any of that. There's so much work that is not paid for an actor that I didn't think your general population knew. And so I thought, okay, I think I need to like shine a little light here. If I can in any way explain how bad it is for us. And I'm doing well this year. Other years I'm not doing well, but people don't want to see see pain and suffering. People want to, you know, see people be glamorous and make it, it, we sell the romance of Hollywood. So I needed to dispel some of that romance for all the working people, like our 87% of registered sag after members who can't even make $26,000 a year. We just, I just needed that. And I felt crazy vulnerable for doing it because people will look up to me. They're like, oh my God, you're an icon. You've been doing this so long. And I realized, yeah, but I've still always been just job to job to job to job. And it, I try to sell it for what it is when it's fancy and the suffering in this is in silence. And so I just wanted to not have so much silence because negotiations are not going well and people needed to know. Yeah. You know, I loved your explainer on AI. And I feel like that as a journalist, but I also think just like as a person looking around thinking like, what's going to happen with our economy? Where are we going? There's a lot of stuff happening around AI right now. Can you explain to our audience, like why we should be paying attention to AI, why it's important for actors and like what's going on with it? Right. So AI is coming for everybody, right? Because corporations believe in the trickle up theory, <laughs> like, You've got CEOs making 52 million a year for running a corporation. I will not name many corporations, but then when you see the money or the, the money that's the revenue from a movie that makes you know, 155 million in a weekend, well, that's not a blank 
screen up there. That's not the CEO up there. That's labor. And it's not glamorous actors and, and heady writers. No, no. That is set decoration, props, janitorial. That is security. That is a, an entire economy. And if you replace slowly but surely everything with AI, actors are just the canary in the coal mine then there is no need ever for craft service, script super, there's none of that. All of that goes away. So your carpenters, it's just gonna be, it's devastating to uh, the economy and the, the labor that depends on the entertainment industry and on production. And so I, they're just starting the, the groundbreaking offer that we were told we got um, in regards to AI was that background performers are, are also, they deserve respect, they are labor. It's a really hard job. And most of us actors started that way. It's kind of like your internship. You, you hustle and you try to like learn as much as you possibly can in the trenches. And then you develop a craft, you understand your technique and you understand how the business works. And then you start to get your guest starring roles or your reoccurring or one line, just whatever you can. But what this big studios are proposing that they just take all those background performers, pay them $200, scan them, and send them home. And they never work again. Like, I don't know anybody who wants to sell their entire, it's not just, it's your face, it's your likeness, it's your voice, it's how you move, it's everything. To replace you, they're gonna give you $200. And it stops that talent pool cold. And I think that, that might be the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. the, and not only that, say, you, say you're desperate, you need that $200 and you sign it. You also have no consent. They have no, you have no, like, they own it in perpetuity. They can use it how they want. Say you don't believe in something, well, they can put you in something that makes you look like you are advocating for that thing that you would never say or do or, or promote. Like, it's just so, inhumane and disrespectful and it's very exploitative and I just don't understand how they can say that that's like a really great thing that they're offering us I mean who would you love to be scanned and replaced I don't think any CEOs would want to be scanned and replaced let's do that to them they're just making corporate decisions easy beans let the algorithm do that and then bring the money back down <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It just seems so inhumane to me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it seems like we've gotten or we're at this place where there's this like big disconnect, right, between what the studios want and what the labor is fighting for to get the fair share. Um, and then, you know, there's us audience members, right, on the right. side being watching and trying to say like, well, I want to support. How do I do that? Or not understanding. What do you think needs to change whether it's in hollywood or in society at large to like make it so we don't we can get past this strike we can get a fair deal for them to make the shows and movies that we love and we can have like a different normal where right. it doesn't like people's labor is being either exploited or undercounted right well well i think transparency is um important and i think one of the things that the actors I mean, I had a lot of, I told you it was vulnerable, me sharing my, what my residuals were and you know how I started. And if I had gotten scanned, I would never have the career that I did. And, and, and on my shoulders stand other people just because I've been doing it so long. And that's, that is the natural evolution. And if what they're offering replaces humans and makes it unsustainable to even try to have this career, the, the, the fact that we have social media to educate people is really important because I think a lot of people didn't know how bad it was. And rightly so, because we dress up and we look fabulous and we sell whatever we're, we're, we're our project that we really believe in. But I don't think the studio has counted on social media and, and all of us being as humble and honest as to how hard it is to struggle, you know, and what the struggle really is. So I think that studios like i just watched something where somebody was saying how much they respected us and we realized that writers actors every performer every 
every labor that is part of building a project, they really respect us. And that's not nice, but pay us so we can continue to do the job, right? Words are so lovely, but if there's no sustainable money behind it, it means nothing. And um, we want what the CEOs want. We want our kids to be able to go to school. We want to be able to afford groceries. We want to be able to afford gas. We want health care. And what they've been offering so far is unsustainable. They want to give us an offer that will have us making less now than we made in 2020. And, in, and that, that contract, if we were to agree to it, would go until 2026. So if you're reporting record profits and your CEOs are making tons of money, like it's just trickling up and your labor is being squeezed out. And that's, that's not America. That's not, that's not what we're, what we're about. And I feel bad for the audience members. Um, but I think that the, the more that they learn, the more that they can use their social media platforms to educate. I saw somebody who did something talking about how long with this pause, because actors and writers have been ready to go back to the negotiating table any second. The people who are stopping this are multi-billion dollar corporations who don't want to share any of the pie. And that's not how it used to be. Now they've got this streaming passive income. So people can raise awareness. If they want to show up on picket lines, well, God bless them. We've had the uh, Fight for 15 LA, the fast food workers out on our lines. We've had painters. We've had set decorators. We have directors. We have small producers just showing solidarity for labor. We are just a union. I mean, we're pretty fancy but we're still just a union and most of our members are just working class and hustling from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I interviewed um, some members of SAG-AFTRA, some Latinas, <clears throat> and I was struck by like some of the ways in which the contracts like trickle down, like the expectation perhaps that Latinos can translate uh, auditions Spanish for free um, and there was just sort of like all of these different pieces whether it's like and some of it's like kind of in the details but it's like the ask for our community feels harder right it feels like there's more like there's less roles mm -hmm. there's high expectations and then and there's less money yes. <laughs> um, at the end of the day and so I'm curious like how do you see the strike and the negotiations helping um, Latino actors to get a better foothold? Well, I think that how underrepresented we are. It's very hard to be, fight being ignored, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been fighting for a very long time. But there's a group that we all started, like the Latinas. Uh, it's called Latinas Acting Up. And some people were like, well, no, we're a part of a collective. We should be separate. And I thought, look, we're marginalized and separate just in the business all the time. Like with what you said, them asking us to do favors because we're lucky to be in the role of this big thing and take less money than we should be getting just because we have if we were doctors and lawyers, our experience would equate to more money. Not in our business, doesn't matter. So they'll offer as low as you're willing to take because the money just, just trickles up. And so we are participating in something called Latinas Acting Up. And we, you know, like if we're gonna protest and be hot and sweaty, well, it's gonna be fun. And some people have said that that is not a good look on the picket line. And I've said, you will not rob us of our creativity. You don't own it. You rent it and you're supposed to pay a livable wage. But we own it. We own the dance. We own the song. This is our talent. This is what we've cultivated for years. So we have started to make our presence known on the picket line. And I don't think people realize there was as many of us and we could be as loud. And hopefully that will will translate when everybody comes to their senses in the big studios and realize, yeah, we look really bad <laughs> trying to just continually post record profits in the stock market for our shareholders, but we're just destroying economies and, and labor. Um, 
when they come back to the table, the, the Latinas will have made themselves known. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I loved watching that and I'm following that account. It's super fun. Um, so to continue on that positive note, like if you could shape the future, if you could say, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is how, where we're going to land. And this is how the industry would be different, will be different. Right. What would, what would that look like? Yeah. Show us your vision. Well, my vision, you get it. Would, yeah. my vision would be that proportionally, as we are in the United States, we would have that much representation in front of the camera, right? So we don't have this big ethnic cleansing of the airwaves. We actually are in positions that we, we can be the doctor, we can be the lawyer, but it doesn't have to be, you know, and then our storylines can be told, but literally where being Latino is part of it, but not the whole reason we are in that story to have somebody rescue us or educate, I mean, it's like, fine sometimes, but I don't live my life that way. I live my life being a female menopausal actor. That's what I do. And yes, I am Latina and I am super proud of that, but don't chain me down only representing a tiny sliver of my community. Um, a fair wage and also just completely getting rid of AI. There is no reason to replace human beings. Human beings are going to need to make a livelihood. Like when I'm at the grocery store, I don't ever use the, the checkout that's just the, the scanner. That's somebody who's not making any money. That's, that's labor that's cut. That's people's wages being cut. That's people who actually are in the store being overworked and underpaid because now they're you know having to answer everybody's question. Like my thing is not scanning, right? So, um, and because I really am concerned for the future of the entertainment industry, like young, young writers, young actors, young dancers, young performers, because there won't be a craft for them to do if everybody gets replaced. You know, technology is fabulous, but not at the cost of the human experience and people being able to make um, a living it's just not fair. So I would get rid of that completely. You want to retouch us a little fine, but don't replace us, right? Nobody wants to be replaced. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's, that's my vision. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, and I'm sharing. still working. I'm still working. I will still play everybody's mother. And when this all falls apart, I'll play their grandma. <laughs> um, so how can we support? You mentioned going out on the picket lines. What can people do? I think so that they can one like really find out what actors are asking for um they can use their social media platforms because it's all about perception right we are now changing our perception to where everybody realizes oh yeah this is a struggle this is not as easy and fun and glamorous as it looks and that pressures uh, corporations because they look really bad right now and I don't think they counted on everybody being us performers and writers being as transparent as to what the struggle really is. So if they could use their social media platforms, make their voices known, contact studios, show up on picket lines and be patient and know that we're ready to get back to work at any time and, and, and stop blaming us. <laughs> Stop blaming us. We're just trying to make sure that everybody gets a livable wage. They're posting, they're posting record profits. Like, was it Snoop Dogg? It's like, somebody needs to explain streaming to me. If, how can I have a billion streams and not a million dollars? That's like 1%. So somebody's getting the billion. <laughs> somebody's getting the big piece of the pie. Look, if studios make nothing on a project, fine. We don't make anything. But you can't keep making money and money and money and then your talent and your workers and your labor are dying on the vine. That's unsustainable. So, you know, uh, we're just waiting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are with you. We are big fans of your work. And I just want to thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with us, for explaining why the strike is so important to our community. Um, oh, wait, can I just say one yeah. more thing? Yes, of course. I didn't, I didn't touch on that. Because 
right now we're proportionally not we're underrepresented right. behind this behind the scenes and in front of the camera so if everything switches to ai we'll never make progress mm -hmm. because proportionally we will just be scanned as the level we are right, right now we'll never and we'll never just keep growing and keep being represented more if everybody is slowly pulled out and it's like mm, yeah let's just keep it let's just always keep it this way and where the latinos are in the background or there's the one person it that's that's not okay yeah i know i remember in one of the stories that i wrote um one of the writers telling me that when you look at ai and how it works right it works off of existing content right. and if you look how latinos have been represented over the last 150 years of Hollywood, most of it is bad. Yeah. Most of it, you know, had better stuff more recently. But if, if the machine can only look at stuff that is, you know, 100 to 125 years ago, yeah. we're going to be stereotyped, exactly. outdated models and low levels of representation. So I just think this fight is so, so important for entertainment. Yes, but also because I think the representation, yeah, it matters, right? Like, Hollywood affects our culture, our culture precedes our politics. We need it. We need to have a bigger, better understanding of what our community is for ourselves and for others right. as well. So, and if we're only represented in a marginalized way, in a minimum way, that is, that can't become status quo. Right. It has, we have to keep growing for our kids. Like I come from a time when there was no Latino sitcom on television in English ever. And one of my favorite things was that children born after that show started would ne never know a time when there was not Latino. Rep it gets me emotional now. Latino representation on their TV. Like it took 75 years of television history for that to happen. And if I just take AI takes that all away, oh, the chancla is going to come out. <laughs> I'm going to be really mad. <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you for those powerful words. I so appreciate your time. We're a huge fan over here and we look forward to continuing to follow you covering your amazing work on and off the strike line. So just thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. And everybody who showed up, I really, really appreciate it. Um, just knowing that we have the support and the community. It really, when it's about a hundred degrees out there and you're hot and you're sweaty, it really helps to know that we're not in a bubble and that people really kind of support us as human beings, as labor. We do. We do. Well, as Toro Media founder Maria Anajosa always says, hasta la próxima. <laughs> sí. <No, no>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.